So speaking of after 18, we're going to go the other, other, uh, end of the spectrum to preschoolers because Rand has got some preschoolers and Annalisa as well. And we've got preschoolers on the way and our grandkids. Um, so we've got, I got a little clip I want to play for you guys. Um, and by the way, you guys know, so I, we're, we're definitely wading into more, um, you know, some somewhat controversial waters. I'm always trying to understand, um, how to make, you know, our community really think deeply <laughs> and not just go about thinking about family, the way the culture assumes. And so I think people, um, are surprised sometimes that we have a counterintuitive take on things. Um, please get used to that. Um, there's something desperately wrong with the way that our culture is doing family. And so, uh, we're really looking for answers that, um, are being underreported. And so, um, here's one that I think was framed in a, in a pretty interesting way by a guy I really respect a lot in this space. Um, and, uh, and I wanted to get your guys' reaction to this. So this is like, should we be sending our kids to preschool? Uh, how to think or frame what preschool really is. Um, so I'll play this and then get your guys' th thoughts on this. I have an attachment to you. You can start seeing it very early on. Kind of a hot take. Go for it. I think preschool hurts children, doesn't help children. What do you think? Preschool is just an excuse to offload your kids into the system. There we go. There is no basis for real, real preschool. I'm very anti-preschool. What are they teaching you that you can't teach them at home? That's what I think. We we talked about this in my Erica Comazar episode, but this idea that a child that young needs socialization. No. What's your thoughts on that? No. Why? Why do they need to socialize with a bunch of random strangers? Why aren't you as a family building a connection with other families? Why aren't you taking them to church? Why aren't you taking them to social events? Why aren't you socializing them that way? Why do you have to send them to a facility where they socialize with key people that you have no idea what their values are, and those kids are all broken, and now those kids are spreading broken behaviors to your children. Why would you do that? What are the top three lies feminism has told women? It gets more spicy from here. But anyway, <laughs> I, uh, he, he was... Keep playing it. Keep playing it. I know. What's coming in? <laughs> That's the ultimate teaser, guys. You guys want to find out, like, what the lies feminists are saying. What's um, going to happen next? That's right. <laughs> Oh, man. But yeah, so that's Adam Lane Smith on The Spillover with Alex Clark. Um, so having a pretty uh, intense take on preschool and how to think about it. So uh, yeah, I'll start April with you and then I'd love to go around to Miranda and Annalisa on this. Um, yeah, what what are your thoughts about his take and, and what Alex, um, Alex Clark also said about that? Well, I definitely have a different perspective on it now than I did. Um, Several of our kids did preschool. What? Um, You're not supposed to tell people that. You remember? <laughs> yes. And uh, really it was right around the time when I feel like preschool stopped being an educational couple hours in the morning for kids, like two mornings a week. And it was transitioning into like a daycare option that people called preschool to make themselves feel better kind of thing. Because I remember I was looking for... Uh, somewhere for my oldest two to go while I was doing work for our business. And um, we and I was really picky about it. So I felt really good about it. Um, but it was like one of the last places it was like you could go Tuesday and Thursday morning. And these were like retired teachers and they were, you know, it was this preschool in a church and they were actually teaching them, you know, ABCs and and colors and things like that. This is way before I was even, I didn't even know about homeschooling. So um, that was great. And it was like a win-win. But, uh, and then we did it with our third child for like a couple months. And that's kind of when I started to have this mental change of like, why am I doing this? Because by then I wasn't working as much in the business. And I was like that I was doing it kind of for childcare and kind of picky about where they were going for childcare. But now I don't necessarily need the child care. And I kind of want her, I want to be with her. So that's when I started kind of like fighting for um, like that whole thing of like, you know, I actually want to be with my kids. She's hilarious. She's so funny. She's three. She's got these little glasses and she says the funniest things. Like I want to be with her. And so um, that's when it, that did not last long. We took her out. And I, so that's when I was kind of developing my philosophy about it. Um, our son was in a preschool where 
we got the call one day that um, he was in trouble because he was using the kitchen utensils as a sword and, um, you know, doing, and I asked if he was hitting people with it. No, he wasn't, but he was pretending that it was a sword instead of a spatula. And so um, that's when I was like, okay, we're going to actually probably not bring him back like ever. So um, I started developing my They were philosophy. socializing him, April. Jeez, Louise. Yeah. You can't have a kid who's... Uh-huh. So- <laughs> That socialization thing is just such an empty argument. It's really, I don't know if they think that we lock our kids in closets and don't talk to them or what they think is happening. But if there's even one sibling at home or a neighbor or an aunt or a cousin or a mom or, a, you know, like there are yes. people around them. If I'm at the grocery store, they're, they're, teach, they're learning how to wave hi to people. And I that's my job. I am teaching them how to interact with other humans yes. in a way that makes them pleasant, <laughs> that, that people want to be around them. Yes. So like he said, like, why would you do that with, uh, you don't know these other kids, they're going to influence your kids. I definitely felt like I, I had to learn that, like, oh, these other kids are going to influence my kids. I actually don't know how I feel about that. Um, so there's, a, there's an interesting kind of, um, I guess meme going around the internet right now about this ta- this this word socialization with regards to schooling and it, it kind of goes they, they will um, I know when we when I was a kid homeschool was super rare um, it was mostly done by very very religious uh, communities and so you could kind of pick the homeschool kids out they were the, they were they were socially awkward and and had just such a different way of of interacting than than your normal public school kids and I was a normal public school kid. Um, and now the meme now is that it's inverted. It hurts flipped. You've got the public school kid who's, who's completely depressed and like experimenting with all these identities and has no idea how to interact with an adult or a younger child is incredibly socially awkward. And you have these homeschool kids who are like, you know, very comfortable, like, you know, with adults and, you know, building things. And, and so it's just like, I think this, this, it's like the, um, I think it's really important for us to catch up with reality. Um, and to your point, yeah, I think something has drastically shifted in uh in this conversation Miranda, what did that start for you um so i'm thinking about toddlers and what they actually need and um i personally believe that they need their mom more than socialization even if that's an argument um because socialization i mean i have a two-year-old and he kind of socializes but he basically plays in tandem and so right. I don't even know if like preschool, you're even at the age yet where socialization is even a question or an argument. Um, you're just like playing next to one another and trying not to hurt one another. Um, you're not having like, uh, I don't even know if you're having deep conversations yet or learning, you know, learning how to have those. Um, and that can, I, I believe it can be enjoyed at home. Yeah. And especially with siblings, like I think about um, you have a two year old and a four year old and they go to daycare or school and like they're separated. Yeah, that's and very strange. About, yeah, it's very strange. And I think about my daughter and my son and my new daughter and they like know the needs of one another. They care for one another and they wouldn't even know each other except for the evenings and weekends. Right. And so I think for like sibling um, relationship, it's it's uh, if you can preschool at home. Right. That's better. Right. So so much, I think, sibling rivalry and sibling conflict comes from your kids being in same age groups all the time, forming alliances with friends. And part of the, the dynamic there is we look down on the younger kids or we don't trust the older kids, you know, in any kind of school setting. We, we had so much fun as seniors making fun of the freshmen or whatever, right? And so that's that's the culture that they're in all the time. And then they come home and what do they see? You know, this little kid who's annoying um, and they have these friends who are their exact age in the exact stage. And again, what's so bizarre is to call that socialization because you spend, after you graduate from high school or college, you spend the rest of your life in intergenerational groups everywhere, right? At work, it's not just one age group. It's certainly at home. Um, and most people are completely ill-equipped because of this same age group 
cohorting they've been a part of their entire childhood to be able to interact intergenerationally. Um, and so, yeah, that that's another element, I think, of the socialization. I love what you're saying, Miranda, about like, yes, yeah, so you want your siblings to have a very unique bond, but that bond can be easily broken um, by a culture that somehow dismisses um, any kind of interact in, intergenerational interaction, which I think is sort of a natural part of what most schools or um, same age group uh, kind of cohorting tends to do. Annalisa, what does it serve for you? Um, I have like two kind of brains going on right now because I taught kindergarten for three years in the public school setting. And so one of the things that we always said during that time was you can always tell the kids who went to preschool. Mm. And I would think about that now as a homeschool mom, I look back and I'm like, man, the reason we could tell if they went to preschool is because the ones who went to preschool could walk in the line. They mm. knew how to sit at a desk. They knew how to transition from the carpet to the desk. Like they knew the systems of school. It wasn't necessarily that they were brighter or they knew more ABCs or colors than the other kids around them. It was because they knew the systems of the school. And mm -hmm. so really when I now on, on the other side of it, I look at it and like, well, really preschool is to prepare them for public school, the systems of public school, not necessarily the education of public school. It's just the systems, how you walk in a line, how you talk to people, the kids your age, your peers, how to do certain things that are necessary to make a public school successful in any sense. So I, that's immediately what I think of is that I don't see the Ne like the necessity for preschool unless you're planning to send your kids to kindergarten where they do need to know how to where that does benefit them to walk in a line but that's not my priority as a mother I don't want my kids to learn how to walk in the line at the age of three or four I want them to learn how to be it like attached to their mom and really decide like be able to come and say I need help or work talk to their siblings and work through those initial stages that set the foundation to be able to do deeper things relationally. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This is, and this is really what Adam Lane Smith, this his whole conversation. If you guys, I, I think we might've covered another one of the clips from this interview. Um, his whole, his whole, uh, expertise is really in childhood attachment. Um, and man, it's so important. I, I think this, this has got to be the, when you're asking what's best for a child, that's got to be one of the first things that, and I think that often, you know, what we're doing and what you're describing on Elisa is it's possible that part of what preschool is designed to do is help children deal with the lack of attachment to their mother. Like they have to learn because they're going to experience this dis disattachment, you know, their rest of their childhood, they've got to be trained how to exist within that world. And we've sort of stamped normal, healthy over that whole thing. Um, and I think that it's difficult not to, um, yeah, not to question that.